So let's see what we'll talk about today. We'll get an introduction and get you an idea of why we're here and what I want to tell you, some motivation for why the product that I'm telling you about is a good idea, uh, what features it includes, it includes uh, the market that it applies to and who's interested in using it, and the technology that powers it. So maybe you've seen me previously in uh, 2011, 12, 13, and 15, talking mostly about the same things. Uh, maybe introducing the application, then about the, the model behind it, the, the rules of the game, then maybe an update on how it uses uh, the web technology behind it. And finally, the last time you saw me, like seven years ago, uh, when I told you how is it that I deploy this application. But now let's see more of an integral talk on how the business of it works and how it has evolved over the years so that you can see that it is doable and it doesn't require that much. So what's it about? The business, the gaming assistant business, I mean, uh, it's for role-playing games. So you have to choose a game you want to play, which has a rules book, some dice that may be applied to, uh, to follow the rules, some paper, pencil, food, drinks, and you're ready to go. Uh, but of course, you need to gather some friends. These are social games. The tabletop role-playing games typically uh, imply gathering with high school, high school friends, university or work, and then you start bringing friends, friends, and then, okay, you got the people, you got the game, the rules, you got the food, and you just meet somewhere. It's a social game. So you gather around, you, someone says, okay, it's at my house or at the club or whatever. Um, that's all you need. Just the table there, paper, the rules. You play, you have a good time. Okay, so why do we need software? Why am I talking about the business here? Okay, the rules book, uh, the dice, the paper are like, um, analog part of the game, but you can make it digital, like most things nowadays. So the idea here is that you replace, okay, the rules book, the dice, the paper with a computer. It's a gaming assistant. The rules, if they are um, enough, if they are complex enough, might need some help or it might, it might make the game run more smoothly if you have um, a software assistant to do it. Some people might want that, others not, but if I'm here, it's because it's a valid business, okay? So we'll see a little bit who is interested in that and how it works. So this is the world of virtual tabletops, okay? There are many. Uh, the, the one that I'm gonna talk to you about, the one I developed, ERA, is just one of them. It uh, does some things that others do not, does not do stuff that others do, and this is mainly a um, small business, okay? It's a personal, um, only to fund my own gaming activities. So it's not a big company. There are very large companies working on this, but what I'm going to show is that it's still a business. It's still a valid business, even for one person selling to a small group of people interested in what uh, you can offer. So what's included exactly in a game assistant? Okay, you have uh, role-playing games, typically require players uh, that have adventures. So you need to be able to create the characters. You need to develop them because they level up, they gain skills. Uh, maybe they, they have uh, damage or not during their adventures and you need to heal them and, and there's combat involved. So when you're in the adventure with the characters, you need to be able to solve how the skills work combat, magic, if there's any uh, healing, traveling from one place to another, uh, then there's always treasure, so you need to be able to create that treasure and keep track of the inventory of each character and the party as a whole, or maybe they left uh, I don't know, a bag uh, on their horse, stuff like that. And then maybe you also want to have some creatures involved in the adventures. You need to be able to create them and manage them because they are uh, sometimes uh, 
the danger of the game when when they when it's not a trap, it's a dungeon or it's a, a dragon and stuff like that. So you need to be able to manage that as well. So what's uh, how does it look like in Era? Well, uh, see, Era has this um, starting module selection uh, that is shown there, where you can go adventuring, generate treasure, check the status of the heroes in the adventure, uh, check the character sheet, or make just make a new character. And uh, each of these uh, modules has their own features, and it's not complex. I, I mean, it's it's complex enough that you may want to have software helping you, uh, especially to introduce new people to the hobby. Because um, uh, in my experience, not everyone is willing to read out a three-handed rule book to start playing a game. Um, so the idea of having software to help you and to remember all, all the rules and to guide you um, also helps helps with the onboarding of new players and also the those organizing the game don't need to keep track of everything um, also if you spill your drink or something as, as long as it's not on the notebook and that would be a problem you don't have to uh, uh, write all the things again in the paper or when you level up you don't have to just erase and, and start uh, taking uh, all the new numbers again and so automate so okay, we have the the rules and everything, the friends, the place. Um, so we was going very well for these types of game. They were starting to uh, they, they were starting to to be used. Uh, but then there was this little issue uh, with the pandemic. Okay, so no meeting, no no place to meet. You still have your friends, you have their books, but how do you play again? Well, but we saw we, we only can change the rules book uh, for a computer, but we can't change our friends right at the place. I mean, well, how do you play during a pandemic? The thing that happened was that virtual tabletops had this chance to um, cover the need for human interaction during the game with chat, voice, video, with uh, applications like Zoom, Google Meet, etc. Uh, but also some of them, not in my case, but uh, we try to, to add them in, in, during the pandemic, had the needs for like telepresence, for dice rolling, for checking maps, stuff that you would do on the table. And also you need the group to be able to get together, but who sets up the server? And do we need a a group member, I don't know, a, a, a login or something for, for a web application, for a cloud application. So some of these things were um, made available during the pandemic and the gaming assistants, the virtual tabletop that came on top during the pandemic were those that already had those features. So uh, although ERA does not add, uh, have all of them, I've been adding some of them since uh, the users now need them. And how did this business evolve during the years? ERA was uh, first uh, offered in 2014. And as you can see there, um, the product is made of a free base application and then paid add-ons that you can download and add content. So if you are willing to put on the all the configuration by yourself. The, the application is free, but if you want the like my help with the, with the add-ons already configured, you paid for that and uh, only for that. So the free software, okay, uh, has been steadily uh, getting downloads since uh, the, since 2014. And uh, but to keep the people interested and to keep uh, reinvesting the little money that this makes, I've been also adding new packages. So how many packages are offered? Well, for the uh, applications available, there are like uh, 25 now available and they've been increasing. As you can see, the last years have been most uh, used to focus on features more than the packages, um, but it's also about to have some new um, parts that as you will see now. So how are sales? Well, 
it's a very very little income but it's small as a token income but uh, it's also been steadily uh, evolving okay so if you can see here the number of packages sold in total is similar to the number of uh, free base product downloads throughout the years so we started uh, uh like five uh, 500 before the first year and now at uh, 4500 at this point uh, who's started using it why, why would someone want it well um I made a, an arrangement with Iron Crown Enterprises, who published the Royal Master Classic and Royal Master Fantasy games, uh, which are famous for the battle realism, the formula rules, and the um, like unrestricted storytelling, let's say, because, let's say, because uh, you don't have a really specific uh, setting in which to play, so anyone can make their own setting and, and play it. So this um, calls for the attention of some maybe specific niche of people uh, and also it makes it for as you can see if you check my previous talks on, on, on the model of the game uh, this makes for a very interesting game to model and to build an application around but who wants to use this okay for combat you have uh, war game enthusiasts who want uh, this from role master uh, medieval reenactors, we are all, always discussing the, the reality of, of the combat, uh, medical professionals who like the, the detail of the damage and how it is healed, soldiers who want to um, do like battles but without risking themselves, um, and then for all the formulas and numbers, there are very, um, there's much interest in physics, mathematicians, so for developers, of course, who say, okay, this is a, like me, who are saying this is a nice set of rules, and also accountants, economists who want to see the numbers uh, interacting. But on the storytelling part, I mean, everyone is could be interested. I've had um, biologists, psychologists, and uh, uh, like anyone can can be interested once you wrap the the number and the complex part uh, around the software application. So what does it contain? Well, I told you that Iron Crown allowed me to do the Role Master Classic and Role Master Fantasy. It's a contract that I have with them. They get like, the part, of course, of, of the income. Uh, but now we're working on adding more. Once the, the nice thing about this is that once it's working, once you have your audience, you have your contracts, you can start adding little by little, little by little with a, a smaller effort each time, OK? So then I partner with Parts Per Million, which is another um, gaming company that uh, publishes Navigator RPG, and they said, OK, let's add uh, support uh, in ERA for our product. Um, and since it was like lightly based on Role Master, that the, the changes were not that hard. It's just a little bit here and there, and then you have support for more products. Uh, also, uh, Iron Crown is now preparing what they are calling Role Master Unified, a new set of rules, and of course, ERA will support them once uh, it launches. But also, Space Master, Privateers, an old Iron Crown product, is being added because the changes from Navigator RPG from parts per million are so similar to Space Master that it was like a really um, simple choice to just add it as well. And uh, in the near future, We'll also be partnering with Open Edit Games, who are doing Against the Dark Master, another role playing game that has similar rules. I can add slightly in increasing complex changes in rules and, and go further away from the, the original product while still keeping everything working. Okay. So, how it is built? Okay. How do I make an application that reaches this, like, thousands of, of people that want to play this game. Okay, I use Faro. Faro has, has allowed me, uh, and it's the base, has allowed me to, to make a, a, a business out of an idea, okay? Without asking anything uh, at first. I mean, I can now contribute to Faro. I can contribute uh, as, uh, as a developer. I can contribute as, as a sponsor, but Faro gave me the chance to start fresh and do what I needed to do. And I'm going to be always be thankful for that. So then the Faro application 
is just starting a server that runs on Windows, Apple, um, Mac OS, um, and Linux. And then it's distributed to the people, to, to the users uh, via an online shop. They download it and they start it, and they get the ERA server run, which then uh, launches a web browser and they can use it from the, the web browser. So persistence uh, is managed with XML files because they are open files that the users can edit and they uh, like being able to, to, to see, to model, to, to expand on the files offered in, in error. So if you want to make a new profession, a new culture, a new spell, uh, or new attack table, whatever, just take from the examples provided, copy the XML file and adjust uh, to your liking. Then on top of uh, Faro, I'm using Boy, uh, Kepler, and Renoir, okay, that are the BAST packages that we have open source. Boy to extend some features on, on Faro, Kepler to do the modeling of the systems, okay, and Renoir for the CSS um, style sheets. And then, as I said, it's a web application, so I have Boardwalk, Seaside, Boardwalk is a BAST application that has uh, had some, some support for, for useful stuff in Seaside. Willow, of course, as you've seen many of my previous talks, uh, Willow was basically the, the, the polishing of the stuff that I was doing inside ERA to um, get the, the web uh, parts and interaction work. And jQuery UI is a, a heavy part of what uh, the, the version of Willow that I'm using to, to provide the, the interaction and, and the user interface. Okay, so what have I told you about? Okay, ERA is a gaming assistant. I told you what a gaming assistant implies. Uh, we've seen that users come from a variety of backgrounds. There's interest and there's the chance to get more people interested in the game thanks to this kind of software. Uh, we have seen that the features, the, the games that are supported increase over time. Sales are steady. Uh, of course, this is like a hobby, uh, something done in my uh, spare time. So it's not a company that's uh, running the, the numbers, but, but it's going well and, and people keep interested in it as, as soon as new features are added. They, they ask for the change, you know, and they report bugs, and it's a, a nice community around it. And uh, another thing that I can't stress enough, this is powered by the Fire community. I can't um, ever be um, stop. I can't stop thanking Faro and all the well the people working on BASD, of course, uh, the people at Mercap who are always also giving me ideas and and, and, and putting sometimes uh, their time also to, to check for for the bugs and and continuing to to the open source projects that we have there. So I hope I kept your interest up to this point. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. And if you have any questions, you can reach me uh, at the GitHub account, uh, Twitter, or the my Thanks, and see you soon.